everyone, this is Anne from the Licking Park District and I'm out at Lobdell Reserve today. Um, I thought I'd highlight this park because some of you might not know the features that it has. Um, it has two entrances, so I am at the disc golf entrance that is off of Batie Road in Alexandria. Um, so I'm going to take you on a quick little hike around this park and focus on some features that you may enjoy. So I am here near the parking lot and you can see Lobdell Creek running at um, kind of next to one of the disc golf tees. I just wanted to take a quick second to note some of the wildflowers, though that's not going to be the focus of this walk. It's just they're so close and easy to find um, and something to look for while you're here. So here we have wild blue phlox, which we also saw at Infirmary Mound Park. But there are a few new ones that I wanted to show you that are different from our previous wildflower walks. So this gorgeous blue flower over here is Virginia Bluebell. So you can see the bell shape, and these are excellent for pollinators and for hummingbirds early in the spring, but they will go completely dormant uh, by summer. This is a great one you can actually put in your yard if you get it from a native plant or, uh, supplier. So here, I just wanted to put, point these out too because these are some of the biggest bloodroot leaves I have seen. Uh, so again, some people think these leaves look like the Batman symbol. I'll let you guys decide. Now as I'm going to walk over here, um, you're going to see a ground cover that is um, kind of one of my favorite plants. It's a native plant. Um, you can also get this for your yard if you have kind of shady understory. And if you look underneath these gorgeous leaves, you're going to see a cool little maroon flower. And let me get it in focus here. You can see that this thing is very low to the ground. Uh, that's because this isn't pollinated by bees. This is pollinated actually by gnats and flies and ants. And it's kind of hidden. You don't notice it until you kind of lift up those leaves and look for it. So we're going to keep going and head on to our next stop. So there are a number of access points to Lobdell Creek. Uh, for those of you interested in geology, these cliffs represent some of the best geologic exposures in Licking County. So these are bedrock and glacial deposits that tell the history of kind of the water and ice that shaped this land. So the bedrock is actually from the Mississippian period when Ohio was covered by ocean and located south of the equator, and it's mostly siltstone and shale. A couple of years ago, um, a couple scientists from the United States Geological um, Survey created a geologic info sheet that I'm going to post in the comments for you. Um, if you're very interested in this, it's worth it to print it out and bring it with you. Um, there's some stops on there along the way that you can kind of look for when you're visiting the park. So after I walk up here, I'm going to continue on to another area. You can look back at where the parking lot is. And I'm gonna turn here. Lobdell Reserve is bisected by Lobdell Creek. So to get to the north side, you either need to cross the stream and potentially get a bit wet, depending on the water level, or you can drive to the Mounts Road entrance. So I just wanted to let everyone know that that's kind of um, what you should be prepared for. The trails here are multi-purpose for hiking, for mountain biking, and for horseback riding. And they range from wide and grassy to footpaths. And just take a second to explore the creek, and then we're gonna head on to the disc golf course. So Lobdell Reserve has some nice 
elevated spots to over to look out over the creek here um, and to see some of that geology that I was talking about before. The Lobdell Reserve Disc Golf Course kind of travels along this upper area and um, it was installed by the Columbus Disc Flyers and is actually championship caliber. For those of you that are unfamiliar with disc golf, think of combining golf and frisbee into a fun activity. Uh, this course is great for beginners and for pro levels. Um, it's also great for families. So if you want to get out and um, do an activity, you know, we're all kind of practicing social distancing. This is a great spot to be out. So all you need to do is get a few discs. Think kind of a smaller, harder frisbee. You can find these online. And the scorecard, which I will put in the comment section. The rules are similar to golf. There are 18 holes, um, and this course features both wide open fairways, like what I'm traveling now, and a few wooded holes. Some are built for long distance throws, and some are um, gonna be a little more challenging kind of navigating around some of those trees and things. The goal is to get your disc into this kind of basket looking uh, final place. So you start at those cement um, blocks at the beginning and you're aiming for this basket. I must say I've tried it and I need a little bit more practice, but I hope that you guys um, that are interested come out and try it out. It can be a lot of fun. We're gonna head up to Mounts Road. Now I'm pulling into the Mounts Road entrance. For those of you who have not visited before, this is about one mile from the village of Alexandria. And from the sign, you can see that it does close at dusk, as do all of our parks. Horseback riding is allowed. So if you do see the red sign up, it means that the trails are temporarily closed to horses, usually due to wet conditions. So I'm going to park. And here you can see we are going to head back on one of the trails. Now, again, these are multi-use trails. There are 210 acres to this park, and it features miles of trails to explore. So I'm gonna head down to this first marker. And as you can see from um, kind of the straw that was laid, this park can be wet. So just wear shoes that um, are good for mud if you're gonna come in the early spring or after a good rain. From this marker, you can continue straight through some of like the upper kind of fields and then you'll get to an area where you go down to the creek um, ahead of us. Or you can go to the left, which is the way we're gonna go and head down um, that path. So this is more of a footpath and just watch your footing So now I'm down kind of in the floodplain area. It is close to the road, but it already seems kind of a world away. Other than the occasional car, the birds are plentiful. Um, there's a lot of really cool plants down here. Uh, we see deer. I surprised a turkey once down here, which startled the turkey and me. <laughs> um, so you just never know what you're going to find. I'm hearing all sorts of warblers and sparrows and cardinals while I'm here. So if you're a bird watcher, uh, whether kind of new to it or not, this is a great spot to come down. Um, as I'm walking, in fact, I think I see, let's see, there's a flash of orange in front of me. And it flew up there. Can you see it? Oh, yep, a Baltimore Oriole. Um, so I've actually seen a number of those while out and about recently, but it's a little hard to see for you guys. Um, but when you're out here, be sure to just take your time, have fun, um, soak it all in and observe nature. Uh, there's lots to see. 
Up here, there's a plant I'm going to point out because it's kind of interesting. This is one that you may see in parks or along the roads or even in your yard. It's called purple dead nettle. It's a weed that's not native to the United States. Um, nettles in the name because it resembles true nettles in appearance, but it doesn't really sting. So that's why the word dead is in the name. Um, it's in the mint family. And one way to tell mints is by their stem. Their stem is actually square. And it's probably going to be hard to see or, sh or show up on here, but it's pretty distinctive when you find it. Um, so these are edible. Um, the young leaves you can put in salads and things like that. But it's one to look for if you're driving along or walking along. And here we have spring beauty. But one that you might now say, oh, I know what that is, because it can be pretty plentiful. So I'm going to walk on down here. We're getting close to the creek. So just a really nice um, area to spend some time, kind of explore. You can get down to the water. It's a great place to go creaking. Just again, always remember, whether you're looking for salamanders or frogs or macroinvertebrates, to leave things as you find them. And this is another area where there's some interesting geology. Uh, so back in the time of the glaciers, when they traveled from Canada to Ohio, they carried a lot of rock and sediment that they carried with them and they deposited into these valleys. And this area is one that is full of what's called glacial drift. Um, in fact, this whole area was a river that's no longer here, and those glaciers um, changed the whole flow of Lobdell Creek. Again, that geological um, packet is in the comments if you're interested. But for now, just enjoy the creek until we head back up to the fields. Okay, we're back up on that kind of upper meadow. To the right, you can see a wet area. So there is a wetland up here where you can hear a lot of spring uh, amphibians, a lot of those spring frogs, which is kind of nice to do on an evening. There's a lot to explore here. So I urge you to come out if you haven't been before, um, enjoy it for the first time, and hopefully those of you that have been have come out and enjoyed this park. And we will feature our other parks on future videos. Thanks.